morning all. Now today I'm playing with this. And this is a little tiny circuit board called the Minim OSD. Now the Minim OSD is the circuit board part of a project called Arducam OSD and it's a first person video camera system for uh, multi-copters or other uh, unmanned aerial vehicles so that you can fly the aircraft as though you're sitting in it. Now I haven't bought uh, a genuine Minim OSD, I've bought a clone but uh, it seems to work, it's putting the uh, characters on my little TV monitor here um, and it's a lot cheaper than the genuine article. So on eBay this is the one that I bought um, it was $14.46, £8.44, and that came from Alice, one of my favourite sellers. Now Alice shows this as a blue board, but in actual fact the one I received is a purple board. Now there are various different types of this uh, Minim OSD. This is a later one. The earlier ones didn't have this little switch mode power supply down here, which turns the 12 volts coming in here into 5 volts for this chip. So be careful because apparently there are uh, stories about the earlier version where there was a linear regulator overheating. Now far be it from me to diss the genuine article, but if you click on Minim OSD, we're taken to uh, 3D Robotics and here is the genuine article and it's $49.99. Now if you don't want hassle, get the genuine article. But I love hassle. I love problems and solving them. So I buy the cheap one. So what actually is this thing? Well, part of it, the uh, bit with the uh, AT Mega 328P, looks very, very similar to an Arduino Pro Mini. And that's because pretty much it is an Arduino Pro Mini. You've got the same AT Mega 328P, reset button, six pin connector, all laid out in the same sequence. And then the other part of the board is this um, end here with the DP7456. Well, that is probably a clone of the MAX7456, single channel monochrome on-screen display with integrated EEPROM. So what does this thing do? Well, it overlays graphics characters onto a video signal. Now, at the moment, I've got no video signal there. And in the absence of an input video signal, which would be on that connector, this thing generates its own grey background and generates its own sync so that the uh, characters can be seen on the video signal. Now, if I connect the video signal, and in this instance I've got a little bullet camera, then what we get is the video signal with the graphics characters overlaid on it. And of course this is a live video signal, so I'm moving the camera and you can see that the uh, graphics characters remain in the same place. So you have to imagine that we're on the ground and we're flying the aircraft using this live video signal. So the aircraft's going to be swirling all over the place. And one of the things that it was discovered when flying in this way is that it's useful to know certain information like how high are we, what airspeed are we traveling at and that's what these overlaid characters are for they're to bring information such as uh, altimeter airspeed indicator all the sort of standard aviation instruments overlay it onto the live video feed so that not only can you see where you're going but you can see where you are how high you are how fast you're going and so on and so forth now if i go back to arducam osd and to downloads one of the downloads is the config OSD, which is a configuration program for setting this board up. And in that download is OSD config XE. So let's run that. And we get this panel. And if we look at, um, this is the config page. If we look at panel one or panel two, there are sort of uh, emulations of what you'll see on your video screen once this thing is all set up and running. So you can see on here that we've got things like uh, airspeed, ground speed, uh, down here we've got battery amps and volts, 
latitude and longitude uh, figures from the GPS here. It's saying we've got seven GPS satellites. Um, up here we've got altitude, I'm not quite sure what H and T I R. Um, here we've got, what's that, WS wind speed, something like that. Uh, direction indicators. So there's a whole host of stuff on there, but I haven't got any of that on my screen because it says waiting for Mavlink heartbeats. And what's Mavlink? Well, it's the micro air vehicle communication protocol. So my guess is that this little board is expecting a continual stream of data coming in on the uh, TX and RX, well, RX. And um, given that data, it would then put that information on the screen. So it's waiting for that. It's not going to get it. So that's all we're going to see. Now, there is uh, one slight extra thing we can do, which is press reset. And if you do that, the image disappears and it just says booting up and then goes back to waiting for Mavlink heartbeats. So is that it? Is that as far as I can go? Probably not. Now, a couple of observations from an electronics point of view. Um, we have two red LEDs here. This one is called D power. This one is A power. So this is digital. This is analog. Now you can link them just to the right of that LED. There's a little pad there which where you can link the two powers together. And you can also link the grounds on the back of the board as well. Um, but keeping them apart probably keeps noise out of the video signal. So if you want a nice clean video signal, you don't want noise coming from your motors and your servos. So that's probably why these are kept separate. We do need to power this board with two separate power supplies. Five volts is coming in here from my FTDI USB to serial board. And of course that's getting five volts from the USB from my PC at the moment. 12 volts is coming in here. Um, this is a six pin connector. Two of the pins are 12 volts, two are ground. And the other two are video in and video out. So I'm getting my 12 volts um, actually all the way back to my car battery booster thing, which I've put through a five-way splitter. It doesn't need to be five ways. Um, although I do need three ways. I need 12 volts for the TV. I need 12 volts for my little uh, bullet camera. And of course I need 12 volts going in to this board to power the analog side. And one other observation is that this board gets extremely hot. Um, now you can see on the back that there are some, there's a three-way thermal via to bring heat from the MAX chip, the character generator chip, to the ground plane on the back. So I suspect that that MAX chip uh, kicks out a lot of heat. I think uh, the internal circuitry is doing a lot and running quite fast. Now also on the back of the board, there's the link at the top there to link the two ground planes uh, the analog and digitals if you want to do that. There's also a link on the right there for PAL, although it's no longer used apparently because the config uh, software can now allows you to select between PAL and NTSC. Um, PAL is beneficial in that respect because you get the extra few lines um, so you can fit slightly more on the display. Now there's also this little LED down here which is called ST probably means status, but I've traced it back through to, I think it was pin 17 on the chip, and that's PB5, and that's D13. So this is actually the Arduino D13 LED. So if I was willing to trash the firmware in here, which I probably am, uh, I could actually just install the Blink program, the Arduino uh, standard Blink program, and watch that LED flash on and off. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Now, it was Rob B that said, Julian, you will not have much joy with the Minim OSD until you reflash the firmware with the KV OSD variant. Out of the packet, these things are flashed to suit the ArduPilot flight control board using the Mavlink protocol. Without the Mavlink heartbeats from the ArduPilot, nothing useful will be displayed. And Rob's right. Nothing useful is being displayed. So I think I might have a go at that. I might put the KV OSD firmware in here and see what I get and then attempt to put the uh, the this firmware, the Arducam OSD, back. I've been meaning to get into quadcopters for quite some time but it's always the same with these things. Where do you start? Well, I've decided to start in two very different places. 
Firstly, I bought the little hub sand so that I can teach myself to fly these things. This is a very good trainer. And secondly, I've jumped right in at the deep end with the electronics and the firmware and bought the little on-screen display board. But um, there is other stuff, other ArduPilot uh, stuff on its way. So this will gradually build up and eventually I want to build a full-size quadcopter with FPV, first-person video, GPS, and every conceivable bell and whistle.